I think we did this a couple months ago. I want to say to Panda, it's when we found out that he was a guest star in a commercial. Um, I think if, if celebrity, if my, a cele- yeah. celebrity in a commercial, yes. trapper keeper, trapper celebrity. keepers. Um, <laughs> and the question was, uh, tell us something about yourself that that the world doesn't know. And today we're asking the one, the only Jeff Haslam. That same exact question, Jeff. Tell us something about yourself. We don't know. So I don't. I'm, I don't think I've talked about this before, but I might be famous in Singapore. <laughs> we don't know for sure. But there was a time after I stopped being a police officer, before I started being an appraiser, that I thought I wanted to be an actor. So I went, got an agent, and did a bunch of extra work. And like, if you look really close, my elbow is in Legally Blonde too, but you have to look really close. <laughs> but at that time, I got hooked up with a guy that was doing an independent film in Utah. He was, I was actually still a cop at the time, and I was doing security for the set. And then they invited me like to do a cameo, and then they gave me a line, and then it grew into an actual like a supporting role part. But he never actually finished the project. He ran out of money and ran away to Singapore. So I don't know. He could have taken the film with him and released it over there, but I could be a famous horror movie star. In horror Singapore. movie too. Yeah, it was a scary movie. So it's called <laughs> The Darkness Within. So Christian Thompson, if you're out there somewhere, where's my residuals, man? <laughs> Hey, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of The DVC Show. I am your host, Paul Krieger, and I'm joined, as always, by my lovely wife, Amy Krieger. Hello. We've got John Sakari, a.k.a. Big Fat Panda, with us. Welcome home. Being your sales associate for the DVC resale market, Derek DeBoer. Hey, now, and just so you know, I'm huge in Bulgaria. <laughs> <laughs> and famous in Singapore, the one, the only, Mr. Jeff Haslam. <laughs> You knew I was coming to you next, and yet you still took the drink. I know. <laughs> I, it needed to happen. I've been talking for a while. Um, well, welcome, everyone, and uh, thanks for joining us for this week's episode. We are getting very, very close, I feel like, to rounding out our DVC fan resort mashups. And so we're heading to two resorts that maybe you've never actually been to. I know that I think Panda... Panda has never been to either of these two D- Disney Vacation Club properties. So this week, we're doing a head-to-head matchup of Disney's Vero Beach Resort and Disney's Hilton Head Island Resort. Oh, I've got my Hilton Head shirt on. Not on oh, purpose. Didn't even plan it whatsoever. <laughs> it's not the resort. It's just I bought it. Just in, in Hilton Head. While staying at the resort. Yeah. But uh, these are two resorts a little bit off the beaten path, but they've been around in the Disney Vacation Club space for some time. And uh, I think... For those of us that have been to these these properties, they are hidden gems. There are things to love in both locations. But uh, we're going to kind of go around the room uh, and uh, go around the room to everyone but Panda. I think this is how we're going to do it. Get their thoughts on which one is better, Vero Beach or Hilton Head. And then Panda, you're going to have the final say. What we sell you on uh, wanting to Ooh, go I to. I love it. The I love most. It. And uh, uh, feel free to ask some questions <laughs> along the way, Panda, if uh, you want some clarity on something. But uh, before we get into it, this and all of our DVC fan content, as always, is brought to you by the world of DVC. DVC Resale Market, if you're looking to buy or sell a Disney Vacation Club contract. Monera Financial, who can assist in financing that DVC Resale contract purchase. And the DVC Rental Store, where you can try before you buy, rent some points, or rent out your own points. And um, I'm going to start with you, only because I feel like you're going to struggle with this. A I bit. am. I it is. I I do have a struggle <laughs> because I'm wearing a Hilton Head shirt. But I okay. So honestly, for me, I I can't I can't pick one because it depends <laughs> on the topic. So if we're talking about just the resort, you know, just the resort itself. I would go with Vero Beach because I think, you know, the resort sits right there on the beach. You've got beautiful views of the ocean. You've got a really awesome Mickey-shaped swimming pool right there. The slide is awesome. I I like wind and waves, despite what Derek says. Um, I think that both (laughs) the restaurant and the quick service is very good. The green room, you've got that, you know, great coffee and things in the morning. You've got drinks in the evening. I love how beautiful the lobby is. It's multi-story. I love the in-rooms. And I just really love the resort itself of Vera Beach. That said, 
when you look at like the the area as a whole, I just don't feel like there's like a ton going on in the Vera Beach area. There are some good restaurants and some little shops and stuff. But when it comes to like just the general area and doing things in the general area, Hilton Head for me is the best. We found so many good restaurants at Hilton Head. Ones that I still think about, you know, Nectar, I loved it. Poseidon, I loved it. Oh my goodness, that bakery, Hilton Head Social Bakery. So good. Uh, there, and, and we went in February and it was freezing cold and I still love the area. I love shopping. I love going to that brewery, you know, but with that said, Hilton Head, you know, there's not really any good restaurants. It's just a tiny little quick service. It's kind of half outside at the resort. Um, you're on the like intercoastal back waterway in the bay. So you're not like right on the beach. So you have to take a shuttle to the beach, but I love both. Oh, and I love the rocking chairs on the balconies at Hilton Head. I think that they're just, you know, that's so cool. And I think it's the only resort that I know of that has rocking chairs on the balcony, (laughs) right? Like a Disney resort wise. Yeah. So actually on your balcony, I can't, I can't pick one. I just can't. (laughs) <laughs> it's it's pretty tough. I I I will I will you know be honest. Hilton Head was absolutely beautiful when we mm-hmm. visited there. Um, the theme and the location uh, inspired by basically nineteen uh, forties hunting and fishing lodge. Um, you know has a lot of southern charm to it. Just kind of nestled right there, kind of on the bay. Um, it was it was beautiful when yeah. we went there. And for going off season, I think mm-hmm. that was what was pretty cool mm-hmm. about being there. And the fireplace was on. It's yep. a real fire. And the three bedroom grand villas have fireplaces. Yeah. Uh, for for dining, just since we're since you're talking Hilton Head, and I just want to stay on that topic. Um, there's really not a whole lot of options going on there. So there's what's called the Tide Me Over Quick Service Restaurant, um, which is your main and pretty much only dining option if you are actually at the resort there. Uh, and then over at the Beach House, there's a little snack bar as well. But as Amy mentioned, I forget the number of restaurants. It's like a thousand restaurants. Something, something mm-hmm. absurd. Some crazy number of restaurants that actually is located on the island there and then also you're very close to savannah uh and other other yeah. locations that you can easily get to for some other great and food. if you're staying at the disney resort there are several several restaurants that participate in like a discount program mm-hmm. for those staying at the disney resort so you don't have to be like you don't have to be a dvc be that excuse me dvc member wow i can't believe i can say that you just show your hotel key and you yep. get that discount. So that's kind of cool. And we uh, have I'm to just go- picking up on something. I'm picking up on Vero Beach. You like the resort. <laughs> Hilton Head, we're not talking about the resort. We're talking about everything around it. So my measure yeah. of it's hard. Yeah. Because- yeah, that is yeah, that's a that's a good assessment because I think that the okay. the amenities and the surroundings of Hilton Head for us, there was a lot more to do. A lot more places to go in the evening, um, a lot more stores, all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. You know, uh, we went to the Hilton Head Brewing Company. That was that we was awesome. We went to a farmer's market. Uh, went to a farmer's February. market. So just all kinds of things to do. Where at Vero Beach, that's what I struggle with at Vero, is that to actually get to what I would call civilization or something else near Vero, um, outside of a handful of restaurants, you really have to drive probably an hour. Um, so you do kind of got to drive a little ways outside of the Vero beach area. So Vero beach, you're kind of going to just relax, be at that resort and be immersed in that kind of beach vacation element. Whereas Hilton head, you've got all of Hilton head and Hilton head Island to really, um, uh, take advantage of while you're there. So, uh, Derek, uh, I feel like we shouldn't have to ask the question, but I'm going <laughs> to ask the question. Are you a Vero beach fan or a Hilton head fan? So that's a rough one. And like Amy said, I love them both for different reasons. So I'm not trying to give you the, you know, cop out answer. I obviously, my heart lies with my bureau. One of these days, I'm going to figure out how this works here. See, I got my bureau beat sweatshirt on. Um, (laughs) That's a great chair. We saw saw the back back of your chair. chair. (laughs) Perfect. Um, So the thing is, and I think it gets into a lot of this when we talk about, you know, what's everybody's favorite resorts is I think a lot of times, I think probably most of the time, it comes down to where did you personally have the most memories at, Mm -hmm. right? So there's, for every DVC resort, for every, every time I say I don't like Bay Lake Tower, someone goes, well, my God, that's my favorite place because, you know, we went there since our kids were babies and that was our first contract we bought. So there's no right or wrong answer. It's just, I just always remember taking my kids to Vero and it was 
right before I became a Disney Vacation Club guy. So we had already been a Disney Vacation Club member. Um, I was down here for a two month training program back when they used to train guys for like two months. Uh, and I lived down here uh, at near Walt Disney World. And right before our certification to become a guide, we're like, hey, you know what? I'm going to be selling this product, so we should probably use our points to go check out Vero Beach. It's only you know two hours away from here, uh, and my son was one at the time, um, and again now he's 20. So the amount of memories that we had that first time, you know, staying there, and again, it's called Disney's Vero Beach Resort, right? It's not called Disney's Hilton Head Beach Resort. It's Hilton Head Island Resort. So, mm-hmm. well, you're a hundred percent right. So when it comes to you know, even why they picked Vero Beach, you know, why they picked it out of, you know, other places was because there were no high rises, because there really weren't, what wasn't that much to do, because they really wanted people to go and say, if you're going to add on to your Disney vacation, we want you to have a beautiful beach, not surrounded by huge high rises and hustle and bustle and all that. So when you're on that beach at Vero, you don't see really any other buildings. You know, when you're walking and you could just walk for a long time, um, it's the cast for 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 both resorts. And I think anybody that has been to one of them or been to both of them, they'll tell you the cast is outstanding. The cast is what those cast members at Hilton Head and Vero Beach, they've been there a long time. I mean, they are such, they go above and beyond because I always felt like that's why the activity level of stuff that they do, you say at Vero Beach from, yes, every resort does, you know, arts and crafts and things. But this place does, on certain days, you make, you know, paper airplane uh competition and you go in the lobby and you throw them down from the top floor and see who's can go the furthest because there are no theme parks. There's no four theme parks with, you know, 87,000 things to do to grab your attention. You're at Bureau. So you're either in the pool, which is a great pool, terrific water slide, or you're on that beach. So that's what you're doing when you're at Vero Beach. Um, the activities that they have at Vero that I love so much, because again, it's where my kids and now I got two of them. We go there a couple times a year and they've grown up doing things like the free mini golf that's around the pool. Is it, you know, the most elaborate of all mini golf courses? Of course not. But you know what? It's free. And, you know, doing that, doing shuffleboard, you know, doing, uh, we had the last time we went last year, it was kind of a rainy little overcast day. So we went and got a game of Monopoly and we sat right there in the little atrium level by the wind and the waves restaurant. And we had a, you know, two and a half, three hour game of Monopoly while it drizzled outside and we looked at the ocean. So the rooms are phenomenal. You can get your regular DVC rooms at Vero. So if you wanted to get a studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, great, they have them. Or if you want, which I prefer, is to stay in the inn, which is that main building that you see right there. So it's perfectly centrally located. The inn rooms are fantastic. So there's Mm -hmm. two big beds. You still have the little kitchenette. So you still have a microwave and a little refrigerator, uh, but you're all right there in that main building and yeah i mean the food isn't great at vero just like it's not great at hilton head um but there's places to go around vero you know there's like you said the ocean grill you know i love a place called squid lips it, it, Is it the fanciest of all places? No, but I like to go there. And when you eat, you can look out and see dolphins, you know, kind of going by. Or I love to eat at the the Riverside Cafe is great. So, um, yeah, Yeah. Hilton Head wins when it comes to restaurants, you know. And I think being outside, some of those restaurants in Hilton Head are just so cool. And you're on the marsh. So, I think, God, it's so hard. I don't know. But I'm still going to go with Vero. (laughs) <laughs> because my sweatshirt has Vero and I have the most <laughs> amount of memories at Vero and I'll be going back to Vero in a couple of weeks because I think there's for me and our family, we've always kind of called it our, you know, it's our Disney beach house. You know, mm-hmm. we don't own a house on the beach, yeah. but we own point. And so the fact that we're able to say, hey, you know, it'd be cool. Let's get like an ocean view ho- hotel room. Like, no, you're not going to pay 500, 600, 700 dollars. But when you got points, you're like, let's go for three nights, you know, and let's sit in that great lawn that's out back. That feeling when you walk into that lobby, it's A, 
I know this is probably like a huge <laughs> soliloquy, but when you walk into that lobby, it's got the best smelling lobby anywhere in the whole entire Disney Vacation Club canon. So I don't know what they do to pump that in, but my God, it smells so good. And then you walk right out the back door and you're hit with the sound of the ocean and this huge kind of, I think they call it like a great lawn or like a croquet lawn. But you'll see my kids love to play football out there at night is where they do the movies. So you think it's cool watching a Disney movie at a regular DVC resort at Walt Disney World. It's got nothing to compare when you're out there watching a movie at night and you hear in the background the sound of the ocean, which is right on the other side of the hedges. So for me, it's Vero Beach. That's it. But I love Hilton Head, too. <laughs> wow. Derek is influential, and he's so genuine about it that it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was oh, that man, Derek man. talking about Vero Beach or was that like his one man version of Macbeth? Because I kind of. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will hit on a couple things that Derek mentioned. You know, I also, as part of these kind of uh, resort mashups, we want to give you some details about these resorts and kind of allow you to compare them in case you are looking to potentially take a vacation there. So, um, Derek, you mentioned activities, and that was something that was on my list here, because as much as we kind of talked about Hilton Head having more to do in the surrounding areas, I yeah. think one thing that I do remember on all of the trips that we've gone to Vero for is that activity schedule that they put out. It is it is thorough and packed with various things to do. You know, uh, Vero has an amazing, amazing pool, great water slide, the mini golf you mentioned. They've got a variety of sports courts, um, you know, uh, different crafts arts and crafts um they've got and, campfire and, sing along and right off the lobby they have free xbox and playstation games mm -hmm. yep so again it's raining out just to be able to go to the front desk and just to hey you know what let's go play some madden or let's go play something else they've got tables that go all the way down they also have a spa too but they've got yeah pre-made you know gaming tables so again you get all your free board games and stuff but unlike getting a board game sometimes at a disney world Resort is like, well, I'm not going to play it on my bed. You know, here yeah. you have places that you can actually play your board games that are in the lobby up and down the hallway too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you kind of breezed over it, but spa, I think is a big thing for this resort is the fact that they've got a full fledged spa. So you can get yeah. a massage, you can get nails done, you can get, you know, a facial, whatever you, whatever you want to do. Um, so I think that's a big selling point, uh, for, for Vero beach. Um, you also kind of touched on just kind of the rooms, and I did want to dive into the point charts a little bit. So I did a little bit of comparison shopping between these two resorts. Um, the one thing you need to know kind of in comparing both Hilton Head and Vero Beach is that uh, Vero has a, kind of a lar larger range of seasons compared to Hilton Head, which has less seasons on its point chart. What that essentially means is that it, it does inflate Hilton Head's point charts a little bit, so what I compared was basically summer season. This is the time of year that most people are looking to go to these resorts, although Vero Beach is extremely attractive year-round because of the weather here in Florida. So mm -hmm. summer season, so anywhere basically July, August time frame. A studio at Vero Beach going to range from 16 to 19 points per night, depending on whether or not you're going on a weekday or a weekend, compared to Hilton Head, which ranges a little bit wider, 15 to 27 points. So the, the commonality here was that Hilton Head really charges a premium for those weekend days because I think they get a lot of people that are coming in, uh, maybe locally, that just want to get away for the weekend at that resort. One bedrooms ranging 29 to 37 points at Vero, 31 to 52 points at Hilton Head. So on the whole, when you kind of round out the point charts, two bedrooms, 36 to 47 at Vero, 41 to 66 at Hilton Head. Again, this is just that summer season. And then the, the three bedrooms, 73 to 88 points at Vero, 71 to 111 points at Hilton Head. So Hilton Head on the whole, definitely going to probably need to have a little bit more points if you are looking for that week-long vacation, um, especially during if some you, of that peak season. If you think about it, though, you know, just like looking at a studio, you know, 16 to 19 points at Vero, 15 to 27 at Hilton Head in the summer. Mm -hmm. If you look at any like beach hotels that sit, yeah. you know, yeah. near the beach, on the beach, you're paying a lot. I mean, we used to stay in Wildwood at the Lotus Inn, which is not the most updated yeah. uh, hotel ever. And I remember, you know, your mom would buy that. And I always felt like, wow, that's expensive per night. 
Like, holy cow, it's expensive to stay on the beach. So I feel like that's, you know, these resorts are very good values for your DVC points. Yeah, when it comes to the number of points, Mm -hmm. for sure. I mean, uh, extremely low in terms of the, like, you're never, it's very rare that you're getting studios at Disney World for, for some of these point rates. You know, those are extremely low point costs. And, and, and just one thing to add, to is that overall, unless you're looking for one of the rare coveted beach cottages at Vero, it's pretty easy to get mm-hmm. into Vero at seven months or less. If you want to go to Hilton Head in the prime summertime, I've literally had people tell me, Derek, we got in somehow miraculously, but we're going to buy a small contract at Hilton Head because you need that 11-month booking window to go to Hilton Head. Yeah. When everybody wants to go to Hilton Head, you can get into Hilton Head in January real easy. Yeah. No one wants to go to Hilton Head in January. We, we had to go in February. Yeah. 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 Well, Vera also just has a nicer weather You know, for longer. Yeah. It gets colder a little faster in Hilton Head. Yeah, I am going to jump to Jeff Haslam next because I can't fully make it out, but I'm thinking his hoodie kind of suggests that uh, he's gonna he's gonna go against wrong side. Oh, <laughs> uh, you just pulled a Derek there, that Jeff. Was very uh, Derek. Was, um, but Jeff, give us your thoughts. What's your choice, Hilton Head or Vero Beach? Everybody has said everything that I was thinking. They're both just so excellent in their own right. But I actually am going to give the prize to Hilton Head. And it's not just because of Hilton Head itself. I actually prefer that resort better by just a little bit. I think the rooms are a little more spacious. They almost give, not quite, but almost give like a Key West vibe as far as Mm -hmm. their layout. Mm -hmm. Uh, We were in a two-bedroom and it it felt very, very similar. Uh, The big giant balcony decks, the over, especially if you can get that water view that overlooked the harbor. Um, yeah, yeah, you're right. There's only the quick service, but there's so many places to eat on Hilton head. Like you guys were saying, and mm-hmm. I know you guys didn't do this because you guys have some weird phobia about bicycles, but we <laughs> rented bikes for the three days. Yeah. You can bike that whole Island and it is so accessible. We never had to get in the car. Every place has a stop to lock up your bike and you can go to the beach with it. You can go to the restaurant, you can go to the bar and every restaurant and bar has live music on the weekends. Um, Mm -hmm. There's plenty of shopping. There's plenty of, of like merch that's specific to Hilton head. If you're a golfer, stop it because I think that place has more golf courses per square foot than anywhere else in the world. Um, The, the room, the resort itself it's kind of the only Disney resort I've ever stayed where it didn't feel like you had neighbors because it's just kind of really spread out and the doors aren't right next to each other. And it's just, even just biking the resort itself, there's playgrounds kind of off in every little corner and they're themed to certain Disney characters. And Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, I I loved Vero. I absolutely loved it. But that hot tub at at Hilton head can fit like, a family of 50 like it is, <laughs> it is. a giant melting pot of yeah. human germs yeah. but it is so fun <laughs> yes yeah. i i actually preferred their their water slide over vero's because mm-hmm. it was fast like it spit me out like i talked about its mother <laughs> um they have <laughs> you know i i liked their merch store better because it was bigger i, I don't know i just there's that little mm-hmm. deck or the, excuse me, that little dock, the boardwalk that goes all the way out into that. Yeah. Harbor. yeah. Oh yeah. Sunset is gorgeous. I mean, mm-hmm. just gorgeous. I, I, there's very little not to like about Hilton head where with Vero, the, the thing that falls a little bit short with me is you have to get in your car to go places. If you want to mm-hmm. go and do anything else, you know, in that area, which is fine. If you know that going into it, where, where Hilton head, you can walk to the other side of the little Harbor where everybody parks their boats and there's a pizza yeah. place and there's the stop and rob tourist shops where you can get 15 shirts for five bucks or whatever. <laughs> um, a couple of bars over there, just everything is so accessible. Yeah. And, and one thing that we haven't talked about is yes, the beach at Hilton head is a little bit more of a jaunt, but that beach is so big and mm-hmm. so wide and the waves are so much more calm than like the yeah. one at Vero can eat your children. If you're not watching pretty close. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> well, and that that kind of is a nice little segue into kind of what both of these resorts do have against them, which is that they, you know, are a little bit more prone to Mother Nature. And uh, Vero Beach has, has taken the beating over the years a lot more than Hilton Head has. Um, as you said, Jeff, that that is a humongous beach uh, once you get out to the beach house at, at Hilton Head Island. Um, extremely wide. So it's not going to be a beach where you have any struggle to really find a spot. Uh, I imagine, yeah. though, during the summer months, it does get very busy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, keep that in mind. But Vero, on the other hand, very small, very narrow beach, um, and it's also continuously kind of getting beaten by the various storms that come through the Florida area. Erosion happens. We've been there uh, three times now, and twice it's almost kind of had kind of a shelf effect yeah. rather than kind yeah. of having a straight out into the ocean. Mm -hmm. It's been it kind like of a steep. A hill. Yeah. It's kind of been a steep drop off there um, into into the water. So um, that is something though that they continuously do work on and they do fix that area um up well but as a result both of these resorts take the prize for some of the most expensive annual dues that you will see uh, at disney vacation club properties and that is a big consideration for people when they are looking to buy at one of these properties vero beach a little bit worse than hilton head so vero beach 13 dollars 86 per point um, for their annual dues hilton head 11 dollars 31 cents and these are for a variety of issues, uh, but uh, most of it is related to insurance and the upkeep um, that it takes to maintain those resorts. But insurance, obviously, for coastal properties continues to go up year after year because of a lot of the storms that, that come through this area. Um, so that is something to consider. And that also weighs on the second price factor when it comes to these resorts, which is what is the actual price per point or the resale value of these properties. And currently, as of October 2024, um, the average resale price for Vero Beach properties was $56 per point and Hilton Head Island property $72 per point, which, I mean, Derek, correct me if I'm wrong, that's about as cheap as you're going to get a Disney Vacation Club contract uh, at those price per points, not considering those annual dues. Yeah. Well, that's probably the number one question that I'm asked uh, every single day for folks that when they start to learn about the club, it's going, hey, so I can buy these Vero points for 45, right? But I can still use them at like Walt Disney World. That is hands down probably the most popular question mm -hmm. that people have when they're starting to learn about the club. But then you have to kind of say, well, how do you plan on using this? You know, do you plan on going to Vero? Do you plan on going to Hilton Head? Because keep in mind, it does expire in 2042, say versa Saratoga, which you get 12 more years and cheaper dues and you have that home resort priority to be able to book. That's where, you know, research is so important. But my God, for people that love these resorts, like I, I can say our, you know, very own webmaster doc, you know, sold some old Key West contracts after he went to Vero Beach, believe it or not, for like the first time. And he mm -hmm. fell in love with it. And he's like, I need to go back and get one of those beach cottages that we somehow lucked into getting. He goes, I don't want to risk it. I know about the dues, but hey, it's the price per point is perfect. I just want to get a beach cottage for me and my family, my kids and my grandkids. So I'm going to buy these points at Vero Beach. So again, just take in, into account how do you plan on using it? Again, I love Vero. I love Hilton Head. I don't necessarily want to own points there. So I'm happy kind of say at that seven month mark, hey, is there anything happen to be available at Vero the month of December or anything Hilton Head when we went? It was in November, kind of right before Thanksgiving. Um, and even again, hearing hearing Jeff talk too about Hilton Head, it made me want to like go in my closet and look for like a Hilton Head shirt because I was like, <laughs> I'm sure I have one. But I literally was like, I forgot that feeling of walking around with that marina is right there. Because again, Disney's resort is basically, and this is what they taught us when we were in guide training is now it, it's on an island on an island, right? So the Disney resort is kind of right there but you can walk on this little kind of a boardwalk where all the yachts and the boats are and walk across the street and you have <coughs> it's so beautiful. And that view that you have from just strolling around the grounds, as much as I love the grounds of Vero, the, I mean, it, you're basically have main building, pool area, then the villas and that's it. And it's beautiful because you're right on the ocean. But when you stroll around the grounds at Hilton Head, mm -hmm. like my God, you see these balconies that are, 
bigger than a you know tower suite at the Riviera, and you're like, oh my god, and it overlooks the you know the harbor area and the marsh area, and you see all this and all like like those themed play areas mm -hmm. were awesome for kids. Yeah. And there's so many hammocks yeah. laying around. You don't get enough hammocks at the DVC <laughs> room. But Hilton has wanna... got hammocks. One of the things that we didn't really talk about was that even though Hilton Head doesn't sit on the beach um, and you they do offer free shuttles, there is a beach house for oh. everybody that's staying at the Hilton Head Disney Resort. And it has another pool. So there's a second pool. So it has its own pool. It has its own quick service, its own table and chairs and its own loungers. And it also has an in indoor section that has, uh, I think, there was there a pool table in there? and. Yeah. Uh, yep. chairs and things and some games and there's obviously you know bathrooms and changing facilities in there so you have all the amenities that you would need to spend the day at the beach um, and yeah. then you know you could take the shuttle back to your your room i was trying to find real quick um because also in that area oh, there's that photo there's thing. an there's an amazing photo booth where you can actually like take your picture and like commemorate the fact that you are there at Disney's there, oh. uh, Hilton Head, um, I just have a yeah. I just have a photo of the photo. But I, <laughs> photo of the I photo. I feel like it's it's worth pulling up. So there there is the photo that we took. <laughs> oh uh, gosh! And they have various filters that you can you can put on the photo, but uh, the, we took a normal well, one when, too. When, when we went and took that photo, they had a sign up. I don't know if they had the sign when you guys went, or maybe you didn't see it. But they were using some of these photos that people were taking for a big photo mosaic mural that their DVC was going to put. I want to say it was at the Disneyland Hotel, but I might have yeah. been oh, really yeah, it somewhere. Yeah, yeah. We submitted and I just, for that. I, I pray to the internet gods that that <laughs> photo made the cut. Sadly, so that sadly, crazy. that mural was in October of uh, 2023, and we didn't take this picture until Well, oh, also, okay. on that note, we submitted a photo for that, and I spent a lot of time trying to find it on that yeah. mural because we were there opening day and there was uh, no hope. No, there was just no, no hope, hope of finding it because it, it was just so big and there was and the photos were really, really, really tiny. So, and um, now, hey, and so Vero used to have a booth just like that and they got rid of it, which I have some pictures of it. I'll try to find them. Uh, but I will touch on one thing that I know may hurt a lot of people that love Hilton Head because it certainly when I found out about it. Uh, they used to have Shadow the dog mm, used to be yeah. on the uh, yeah. resort, and they used to have Shadow's owner, which is Blue Crab, and he used to do a story time in right off the main lobby, which was so cool and cozy. I remember the first time I ever stayed at Hilton Head with the kids. We looked at the sheet and we're like, "What's story time with you know uh, Old Blue or whatever?" We're like, "I don't know. We might as well go. We're here." So you go there in this room and he literally sat there and he had like his guitar and he was telling like ghost stories about the island and Hilton Head and going around this room. It was one of those things that you can't get anywhere else. It was just, you know, free entertainment, but it was teaching you about where you're staying. And again, Shadow had his footprints all over the whole entire resort. Yeah. Like, like yeah. he walked up to the place and he had his, his dog house. I'm sure every parent that ever took their kids there has a picture of their kids that crawled inside the dog house and you take that picture of them. But then it, it all ended, I think, around the COVID time. No mm -hmm. one really yeah. got to see it. Exactly what happened. But it was a bummer because for us, it was almost like that's like taking any history of turtles out of Vero Beach. Like yeah. you can't take Shadow out of Hilton that. <laughs> like you can't. Yep. Um, I, I do believe that Blue Crab is still performing part time at some other hotels I, I, around the I area there. That, right. that was a like Marriott was a, or like a Hyatt or something. Yeah. That was a big to do when um when when he was let go, uh, because you know, so many people, you know, were were very emotionally attached. And when we were actually there, still in the rooms, there were hints of mm -hmm. shadow. Yeah. Um, before yeah. the refurbishment. Yeah. And uh, also that's very much worth mentioning. So both of these resorts, um, Hilton Head is just now finishing basically a full refurbishment. <laughs> so these rooms have been fully gutted. We definitely need to make it back out there mm -hmm. and check out the refurbished rooms. Um, we, uh, they were actively under construction when we were there in January and we didn't luck out. They only had like we had a one bedroom, I think, and they only had like <laughs> so there was like two, two rooms yeah. that had already been refurbished, uh, and so uh, they they've now, I believe, they've 
they've gotten close or, or basically are mm-hmm. finishing that resort at this point in time. And Vero Beach has just undergone basically a soft goods refurbishment. Um, and uh, as part of that, they've received the Murphy pull down beds in uh, most of the rooms. I say most because uh, a lot of these properties that are uniquely shaped, they do have some rooms that are in some locations where they just can't fit that Murphy bed. Uh, the same can be said for Boulder Ridge. Boulder Ridge has a couple couple rooms on the upper floor where it's the just roof. like, well, yeah, it's a little bit too tall. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have to have a really bed's gonna be short. Derek's not gonna fit in this bed. So, <laughs> but um, but yeah. So um, that comes down to me, and this is a very much a toss up because um, I am a foodie at heart. And there is not, I think, a bad meal that we had when we were at Hilton Head. And um, where uh, vice versa, I can say I've had some bad meals in the Vero Beach area, although there are some, there's at least one or two restaurants that I go back to time and time again. Um, I grew up uh, as a kid, if we weren't coming to Disney World, uh, doing some vacation like that, we would vacation at the beach, we would do a big beach vacation. And we would just spend a lot of time on the beach. That's what the vacation was for. We we spent time there. Um, you know, I uh, took Amy there. You know, the first year we started dating, uh, we went to uh, Wildwood, New Jersey, and spent time on the beach. And I dug a big hole uh, that that she could sit in. Um, so <laughs> I, so I, romantic, yeah, <laughs> romance <laughs> at its finest. Um, look. De- or, uh, Panda's wiping his eyes. He's tearing up. Um, but uh, I think of him cooking you a raw burger while you're sitting in yeah. the right. holy dunk. <laughs> so <laughs> I, as, much. as much as like both of those things appeal to me, I think that Vero appeals to me a little bit more from the mindset of being able to just kind of lay back and have a very relaxing beach vacation to just kind of fully unwind and fully uh, kind of relax uh, in that environment. Um, and so... I love both locations. I want to go back time and time again. We just recently went to Vero Beach with my mom. That was a wonderful trip. My mom loves the beach just like I did. And she had a wonderful time at Vero. Uh, But uh, I don't know if this is going to work, and I'm going to try my best to do it. Um, But uh, I'll say play full screen with audio. Sure. Um, But this, I don't know, didn't work. Just had a little black box that came up. Look at that. (laughs) Uh, maybe I'll try a different. You one. could edit it. So in. Cool. I could edit it in. Anim- add animated overlay. There we go. Um, <gasps> this wild. moment from our last trip probably just absolutely um, is is why I love Vero Beach the most. And uh, for anyone that's been there, or for anyone that uh, basically knows, Vero Beach is uh, uh, essentially uh, a b- very big turtle area. So they have active turtle conservation efforts at Vero Beach. You can actually go out on tours early in the morning if you want to and, um, and, and kind of talk to the people that are kind of walking the shore, marking turtle nests. They have the tour de turtles that happens once a year uh, in which uh, Disney and their uh, animal um, efforts, they actually have two or three turtles that they release that they've kind of either rehabilitated or something over the past year. They work in close connection with Animal Kingdom and the work that they're doing there. But there are turtle nests marked all along Vero Beach. And we took a walk late one evening at Vero Beach. And I I remember just kind of taking in the moment and seeing movement in front of me. And then seeing all of those turtles mm-hmm. um, like a whole and nest it just and went to um the it was absolutely amazing we've got like a uh, a reel up on the dvc fan instagram that has some more video with of the it. nemo music behind it if you want to cry yeah if you do want to cry put the nemo <laughs> Uh, I put the Nemo music behind it. Um, this is not something you should expect at Vero Beach. I, I do want to kind of just add that, is that there are turtle nests everywhere. This was not a marked nest that these turtles came out of and hatched from. And also there was a, a, a lady, her husband, and their dog that were walking as well that evening. And they came up to us after we saw it and they saw it. And she said, I've lived here for 11 years. And I walk this beach every day and I've never seen this. So um, it is something where you've got to be in the right place at the right time. Normally, these these turtles are hatching late at night. Um, but, um, you know, life finds a way uh, to quote a different 
non-Disney <laughs> franchise, I guess. Um, and uh, watching all of those turtles just kind of go out on their big it adventure. Was so that cool. was that mm-hmm. was something special, and that'll be something that I remember as both a Disney Vacation Club member, but just you know having that moment with Amy and and my mom uh, mm-hmm. probably forever. So all right, I've made my decision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hey Panda, before you do that. Paul's story just made me want to sum up what's so great. I think we can all attest about both of these resorts are the main fact that some people go, I don't know if I'll go because there's no theme parks or whatnot nearby. The memories that you will make, whether you go to Vero or whether you go to Hilton Head are going to be way different. And I'm not saying better than your typical theme park memories, but there's something to be said about, I mean, for me, as a parent, having my two boys basically grow up going there is the memories we have is because everybody puts their phones away. They're not trying to get a magic fast band lightning lane, 16, whatever it is. You're not doing that. You're literally like, let's go play shuffleboard. You lucked out last time. Mm -hmm. I beat you in mini golf two out of the last three games. Can we go play again? Can we go walk on the beach and go look for shells? Do you believe the turtles? Or let's go play Monopoly. Mm -hmm. You're going to have great Disney memories being a member anywhere you go. But, I mean, we can all personally attest that, like, the memory that Paul just shared, I've got a trillion of them that I wouldn't give those up for any attraction at any Disney theme park, period. Yep. Well, and just to add to that too, I mean, I know that Vero is closer to Disney World, so it's easy to add on to a Disney trip or a pre-cruise. I know a lot of people do, but if you're flying, Savannah is really close to Hilton Head, so that's an easy flight for a lot of people on the yeah. East Coast, okay. and a very most of the time inexpensive flight, depending on where you're flying from. But what was amazing to me is we we met Amy's cousins. They came down to meet us from North Carolina kind of was meeting in the middle and they had never stayed at a Disney resort period, Disneyland, Disney world, nowhere. And they were just blown away. Even at Hilton head, which doesn't have theme parks, like Derek's saying, mm-hmm. they were just like the cleanliness, the, the, the cast members, mm-hmm. every, the theming, all of that still carries over to these experiences. But like Derek says, so much more chill and so much mm-hmm. less. you're not yeah. getting up at 7 a.m and you're not rushing from dining reservation to dining reservation and you're not going hard all day open to close. It is so we have relaxing and it's not a lot. I don't know that if I, if I didn't own DVC, I'm not sure Vero would be even something I would probably put on my radar. There's so many beach towns in Florida with hotels to stay at, but because of DVC, it gives me that access to Hilton head. It gives me that access to Vero that I probably otherwise wouldn't utilize but now I can't imagine living without. Yeah. Perfectly I think that's what said. makes the, that that's what makes them so special too. And, and Derek mentioned it earlier, you know, they're, they're very accessible in the zero to seven month booking window. And, and we, as members, we appreciate them and love them so much that we are very scared for 2042. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, <laughs> right. um, because I feel like these special places may be going away at that time, because mm-hmm. I just don't know that Disney sees the value in them. Um, long term moving forward. I hope we're wrong. If there's ever been anything that I hope we're wrong about, it is it is that factor. And it's that Disney kind of acknowledges that there is something special about these resorts and there's enough people to keep them surviving or we can make enough cash by selling cash reservations here and keep the Disney magic alive. Because that is something that, I, I, you know, just to round us out before we get Panda's big opinion is that both of these resorts are Disney. Mm-hmm. And that's also what makes them special. There's the background music the moment you walk out your door. Um, yep. There's the Disney magic touches of them waving with the Mickey hand when you arrive. Um, yep. There's all of those Disney character meet and greets. Yeah, and... character meet and greets. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, just all of those special Disney touches that are incorporated into a vacation that you're just not used to them being incorporated into. Mm-hmm. And that makes yep. it even extra special. So um, I don't think there's necessarily a winner or a loser, but Panda, that's your tough decision to pick a winner <laughs> and a loser. Cause these are resort <laughs> mashups and this so is not, there's no participation you guys, trophy. <laughs> you guys really, really made it hard. Cause I'm thinking, where would I want to go? Ultimately, when I break it all down, here's why I'm going with Vero. Ah, there is no, no, Je- Jeff. I'm with you with Hilton. I'm just, I'm I get teasing it. You. I'm teasing no, no, no. I know. But the, the Vero, what I love is the disconnecting. Throughout my life, and I'm old, like Amy said. 
throughout my life. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, you can, I, the memories that we make are not sometimes the big rides. They're the Monopoly game that Derek talks about. And sometimes, especially today when Disney's got you on your phone in the park and everywhere, technology, technology, it's nice to disconnect and you're forced to connect with people on a different level and just relax and leave your phone in the room. I need that. I, I can be in Disney and have a million restaurants and places to go to. I will go to Hilton and do that, but I like that view. It's a different vacation. And I think it's a good way to, for people to connect. I don't, I don't know about the the listeners and the viewers out there. I, I you know, when we, when we talked about kind of doing these bat mashups, um, I see the analytics of all these videos and I see everything and how it performs and everything. And I know that Hilton Head or Vero Beach doesn't necessarily, you know, get the love that the other Walt Disney World properties are. But I don't know that I speak for you all, but this has probably been like one of the funnest shows that I think we've done in a while in yeah. just talking about yeah. this because it is, um, you know, it, it, it does really hint to why I think we're all Disney Vacation Club members and kind of where we find the magic in that membership these days. Um, so thank you guys. Thank you all for thank you. Yeah, the, uh, the conversation. Um, because it was is definitely something special. Um, as always, we want to know your thoughts as well. Which one of these two resorts do you love, or do you just kind of love them both? And um, just love the <laughs> as Panda said. I, I don't think you know could have put better words to it. The disconnected aspect of you know relaxing and having that vacation and connecting with people, which is rare these days. And that's what we do when we film these shows, you know, once a month, we connect with each other for three, three hours or more. So, um, yeah, let us know in the comments, like this video, subscribe to our DVC fan YouTube channel. And as always, we will see you for another episode of the DVC show next Monday. Bye everybody. <laughs>